Okay, so we just have two main components. We have a cloud texture that's been rolled out to fill uh, enough space to cover our creature, and we have our creature layer. And to cut the creature out of the cloud like a cookie cutter, I use the magic wand. I select the empty space around the creature. And if I turn the eyeball off, I'll see the little marching ants around my creature shape. And then I change my selection to my cloud layer until that's darkened, you know, selected. Then I can turn that on just to see what I'm doing. Then I need to invert the selection. So it's not the, the pixels outside of my creature, but rather the pixels inside my creature. And I have a feather of two pixels. So I say select inverse. And now I can go to layer new, sorry, not layer new, layer, oh, it is layer new, new layer via copy. But the shortcut for that is command J on a Mac, control J on a PC. And when I do that, it actually doesn't look like anything has happened. Come on. <laughs> Just because I, it will copy it onto a new layer above. But now my computer is not moving. So, la di da. So I'll let it try to catch up. And why? Because it's waiting for ads to load off to the side. Oh, capitalism. Shake my fist. Okay, so I've selected the empty space. I'm going to invert that selection. So it's inside my creature. That way I won't see marching ants on the outside perimeter of my image. And then I just hit Command J on my Mac. And nothing happened. <laughs> but it's trying. It's waiting. Yeah, so if if photo P is being a pill, we can try reloading it. And that's why I checked that all my other you know programs that aren't necessary are closed. But of course, I have to run two different recordings. So that's taking a lot of processing too, unfortunately. So let's try it with the layer via copy one. So I keep doing the same thing. It just needs to take. And we want to do select inverse, so it's just the pixels inside the creature. Then I'll, I'll use the long form, so I go to layer, new, layer via copy. And it was doing it just fine. And this seems to give it an aneurysm. So this is what I'll do. I'm going to save it as a PSD. And because I named it as a new file, it will have that name. Then I'm going to close Photo P. So this is real-time troubleshooting here. I'm going to quit Google Chrome, because all I need is Photo P. I'm going to reopen it, and that should clear the cache. So all of the ad memory and stuff that's making it slow down. I'm going to go back to photop.com, which we don't need any kind of sign in for. Okay. And then I'm going to open from my computer. And I know it's in downloads. Because I just downloaded it. See how it's a PSD file? That means it has multiple layers. 
That's what I want. If it's a JPEG, it won't have layers. If it's a PNG, it won't have layers. Oh, and sure enough, it did work. It just wasn't showing me. So it was lagging in real time. And it cut it out. So if you're having trouble having it work the way you know it's supposed to work, try saving it as a PSD, closing your browser, and then reopening PhotoP and reopening the file in PhotoP. All right, so that was a lot of fun. So now what we have is we have our blanket texture layer, and then we have the cutout of our creature, and now I can delete the blanket texture layer. And I'm gonna turn on my creature, put it on the top, and then I'm gonna hit Control T and shrink it down to the bottom. Because now this creature is only needed as reference. Okay, now I need a sky behind my creature. And because I opened a new file, I got um, the background already filled with white. But I don't want a white sky, I want a, a blue sky. Or some sort of colored sky. And so the first thing I'll show you how to do is how to change a full layer's color. And we've done this a lot before, but we've almost always filled it with white or gray. So I'm gonna say, edit fill on the background layer. And instead of white, we're gonna choose a custom color. And then we can use the color selector and we can pick from any of these millions of colors with the color picker. So if I choose something like this and say, okay, and then I fill the background layer, normal mode, 100% opacity. It will give me that color. So that is a very blank, bland sky. So I want to add some variations to it. And so here we are for the first time kind of painting our own pixels. So I'm going to do a new layer on top of that background layer. So layer, new layer or I can always use the little post-it icon within the layer window that's next to the trash can. And for this, I'm gonna use a new tool, which is underneath the eraser tool, and it's called the gradient tool. When you click on the gradient tool, you'll see the tool options at the top. And I wanna use the very top tool option, which is just a white to black linear gradation, normal mode, 100% opacity. And then how you do it, is you click and drag, and you pick the direction of the gradation. And this is how you want to kind of match the lighting of your cloud. And you can do it a few different times. Because it's at 100%, it will change completely. And this is just white to black. So that lighting doesn't work as well with my background cloud texture as that lighting does. And I can even stretch it way beyond the edges to kind of make it less severe. Okay, now I can take that layer and I can take its opacity down so that it affects the flat blue behind. And you see how that's starting to match my cloud because I have this kind of stormy cloud that's almost as dark as the sky. Now here's another way if I make a new layer you can paint the sky any way you want but I wanted to have some form of gradation to it and I use the gradient tool but instead of just taking the black and white as is I click on it and I can open up the options. So double clicking on the bar itself. And that way I can actually change the colors. So instead of white to black, I can go light blue to darker blue or even to kind of like a purplish, grayish purple, which might be interesting. I say okay. And now on a new layer, I'm going to drag a gradation, maybe at a slightly different angle. 
and I'm going to take that opacity and blend it in with the others. So I start to get a pretty complex sky this way. And you can keep playing with different directions, different you opacities. Yeah, I'll make I'll make a another layer on top of this one. So we're just making more and more complex sky. Painting the sky, pretty fun. Okay, so I like that for the blue to slightly purple. You can see that in the gradation preview there. Now I want to do one that's like a rainbow because the sky is complicated. And so if I use the drop down menu next to the gradient features, this is on another new layer, I'm going to choose the one that's rainbow. Then I'll paint with that. It's still linear, right? So this is a little crazy looking. Very psychedelic. But I can use it in a really, really faint way. And we're painting real pixels here. This isn't a filter. So I can take my opacity, take it down. But what I can also do, like really faint like this, I'll do it a little bit more opaque so that you can see it. But then I can actually warp it, right? I can say Control T. right click within it and say warp and I can actually bend the gradient by tugging at the different anchor points because the colors in the sky aren't always perfectly on a linear gradient when you have multiple gradients each gradient is a layer of its own right yep yep you're just layering them up so I can For get kind of, kind of a rainbow effect this way it only shows the gradient on top. Well, you need to, in order to see through layers that are on top of each other, you need to play with the opacity. How did you get the blue layer again? I just said, I went to the background and I just said, edit fill. And instead of filling with white, I filled with a custom color. And then how did you get the blue, where the blue gradient? So with the blue gradient, I just clicked, I'll do it right now. Sorry, let me stretch this first. I just clicked on the, the gradient bar itself, double clicked, and then you're able to change the colors, just like you were for your vector shapes, by clicking on the little color squares okay. and hitting OK. So you can customize the gradient to any colors you want. And then I'll just show you one more, because this is our introduction to the gradient tool, which can be very helpful later when we're doing lo logos and type and so forth. So if I make another new layer, if I click on that gradient bar, double click on it, it will start with the default, right? So if I ever want a new default, I can use the drop down arrow and I'll go back to just white to black, right? Because this is the most basic. If I double click on that, I can change the colors by clicking on them, selecting new colors. Click on them, select new color. But I can also, this is why I'm doing it again, I can also add a new color on the gradient. So this just goes between two, but if I click on the bar, it will give me additional colors. So if I don't quite want a rainbow, I don't quite want just two colors, I can work between them. And then I can paint with that gradient. And to, to answer Gideon's question, why does only the top one show? Well, because if it's at 100% opacity on normal mode, it will be the only one you see. So you have to take your opacity down and blend it with the others. And we can use now all of our compositing skills as well. I can also do image adjustments to it because these are real pixels. And I can play with the hue saturation. I can play with the color balance of my gradient. I can play with the, the levels of my gradient. 